Hey guys, it's Rachel and welcome back to my channel. So today what we are going to be doing in this video is ranking all of my palettes. I saw Kelly Gooch do this video a few weeks ago. I honestly don't know how long it was. And then a few more of the people that I'm subscribed to here on YouTube have done that as well. And I thought that that was going to be very interesting. If I was going to rank my palettes, where would they end up? Now, I have 17 palettes here, which is considerably less than I used to have. I've curated my collection for a really long time in order to get this down to something that I deem acceptable. I'm going to start at the bottom with my least favorite of my own palettes and work my way up to the top. Let's get started. Number 17 is going to be the Too Faced Boudoir Eyes Palette. I bought this palette quite a while ago. I was in the mood for getting something that was very cool toned. If you can see that. And I wasn't that impressed with the quality of the shadows in here. Which kind of surprised me because I think a lot of other YouTubers I've seen review this palette really liked it. This was this is old, by the way, this is way back in the day. The color story is okay, but in terms of like the, the mattes in here, like this garter belt shade right here, it, it goes on my eyes really patchy and I, I don't like it very much at all. I do like satin sheets. That's the only redeeming quality that I think that this this little palette here has. So that's my least favorite. Number 16 is going to be my Too Faced Chocolate Bonbons palette. Another cool tone palette. I bought this later than everybody else. I bought this after it had been out for a while. Everybody said they liked everybody. The people I've watched said they liked it. I like the cool tone, the cool tone mattes in here, like Pecan, Pecan Praline and Cashew Chew. But the thing is, is that I don't hardly wear just a brown eyeshadow look. So, I don't ever reach for this and the quality is just sometimes if I do find myself reaching for it I will use the pinks in this palette most of the time. Number 15 is something I'm really sad about. This is the Juvia's Place palette um, labeled The Warrior by Juvia's Place and it is an all gold palette you can see this. I never reach for this. I like the color story, that's why I bought it in the first place, but I never reach for it. I don't think I ever have a day where I want to go with like an all gold look and if I do there's another palette in here that I'm gonna show you that I will reach for first. Maybe I ought to play around with this more because I really like the color story. It's neglected in my collection. Number 14 is something, this is the Too Faced Semi Sweet Chocolate Bar Palette. I ended up buying this when Too Faced had it like for half off because I wanted a, the cho a chocolate bar palette but I, I liked this more than I liked the original chocolate bar's color story. I really like Bon Bon right here and Caramel right here. And peanut butter, which is of course everybody's favorite shade. Rum raisin, which is a cool toned shimmer, is also really pretty. I just, like I said, my tastes have changed. And I don't go with an all brown look anymore these days. And yet I can't make myself get rid of this. Number 14 is the peanut butter and jelly palette by Too Faced. I know everybody and their mother had this palette for the longest time and a lot of people have decluttered it. I love this palette. Warm toned looks are like my thing. These like, it's more of like an orangey brown, especially like Nuts About You and like peanut butter here and, and um, peanut brittle. This is kind of like a one trick pony for me. If I want a certain look, I will come to this palette. But I happen to just really like these colors and I don't see myself getting rid of this anytime soon. I don't, however, use the purples in this palette. If I want to use a pop of purple, I will use one of my other colorful palettes. This is a very sheer, like, topper shade that 
will disappoint you. But I really, really like the mattes in here, which is why I keep it. Number 12 breaks my heart. This is the ABH Norvina palette. Uh, it's been well loved because I've tried it a hundred times. This is, okay, you can see there's pan on this. This is not because I've used this shade that much for pan. It's because I dropped something on it and it's, the, the, the shimmers in here are, well, all of them, they are so incredibly soft that it just and disappeared into oblivion. I, and it, it's a very beautiful, it's my favorite shade in the whole palette, but it just couldn't stand it. The mattes in here are really good. I was disappointed in the shade Soul, just like everybody else. It does not look true to pan. When I put this on my eyes for the first time, it looked like I had to bruise, and I was disappointed. And the other purple here, Celestial, I I worked and worked and worked with this shade to build it up, and I couldn't get it anywhere. And now it's gotten hard pan on it so bad, I can't hardly get any pigment out of it anymore. I, I keep trying in my defense. It just hasn't worked so far. I really like the pinks in here and the warm, the warm tones as well, but... As far as my ABH palettes go, because there are several, this is my least favorite one. And I was really disappointed because purple is my favorite color. Number 11 is the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette. I don't use this as much as I used to. You can see I've hit pan on this because when I first bought this palette, it was like my reason for existing. I love this palette. I, I know a lot of people don't like this smell, but I love the smell. I even have the uh, Papa Don't Peach blush and I love it. The packaging got me. Guys, this is so incredibly cute. This little peach here and just, I loved everything that, all the packaging that came with this line. Colors in here that I tend to gravitate towards would be Luscious, which is a gorgeous gold copper shade. Can you see that how, oh, so pretty. That looks so incredibly unbelievably beautiful on the eyes. I also like Just Peachy, this this um, pink one right here, but it got hard pan. The thing that I found with my Too Faced shadows is that my shimmers get hard pan really easy. So I don't tend to use them. I clean them up and I sanitize them, but I don't tend to use them all that often. I don't really use the, the purples and the green and the black all that much. I'm st I pretty much stick to like this half of the palette. It was well loved when I first got it. I just I just have more and different palettes that I use more often, but I don't know if I'll ever even get rid of this just because this wasn't my first high-end palette. I think this was like my second high-end palette. This was the first palette that I had had my eye on for a really long time and finally got my hands on it. And it was one of those things where I loved it the minute I got it and I still love it today. Number 10. This is the Masquerade Mini by Juvia's Place. And as you can see, it's really messy. Um, I had a little accident with this shade up here. Zola. I love this shade. The shade is gorgeous, but it was very, very soft and it makes a mess on everything. <laughs> this is a palette where I really need to play around with some of my Juvia's Place palettes more. I have no idea how to create a cohesive look from this palette with just this just this palette. I mean, this is where I'm going with this. Using the the browns and the colors together are is very difficult for me to like come up with it in my brain. So usually if I'm going to use this palette, I'm going to use the shimmers most of all to like do an eye look that's mostly mostly the colors and like a pop of color. I really don't like this pink shade Bori. It's a matte glitter. The rest of them are really good. Number nine is my ABH Soft Glam palette. I had a gift card and some points at Ulta and it's one of those things that I just bought and ended up loving more than I thought I would love. This is a very, well, it's like it says soft glam. This is a really good look for everyday wear. 
for work. I love orange soda. That's one of theirs that they have a single of. And I can go like orangey gold with this with this palette or I can go pink and dark with this palette, which is why I really like it. I really like rose pink as well. I, I like dusty rose. It's a very, I don't say old lady, but it's classy. It's, it's just like it says, it's a dusty rose shade. It's not, I mean people, I think some people will call this a neutral palette, but I, as a color lover, I wouldn't call this a neutral. This is soft glam. However, this used to be my favorite ABH palette for a long time, but it's been knocked out, and I'll show you in a minute. Number eight is my Blossom palette by Blush Tribe. Blush Tribe is an indie brand. I bought this palette because there's a lot of pastel colors in here that I don't have in my collection. This really rounds out my colorful eye looks. So, you know, you've got a, a pretty pastel yellow, you've got a pastel purple, which is my most used shade in here. A, this is a green, it looks green, it kind of comes off turquoise. Pastel pinks, bright pinks. I always use, these are all, this is an all matte palette, so I usually pair this up with some of my Juvia's Place palettes with their shimmers to make colorful eye looks. I absolutely do not regret buying this palette at all. I think it is a staple in my collection in terms of colorful eye looks. But I don't always do a colorful eye look every day, so that's why it's not like top on my list. The quality is pretty good, but it's not the, the best I've ever tried. Number seven is my Magic Mini Palette by Juvia's Place. This is also a palette that I have a hard time making one cohesive look out of this one palette. Maybe it's just me, but in terms of like colorful eyeshadows, I have a hard time like color story wise, like coming up with ideas myself. Sometimes I find myself having to like copy off of others. So I'm like dropping this from the frame. Um, Zuba here, this pink shade, I use all the time. I love this shade. These are just great. Kogi here, this is actually a true red. I know in the blo in the Blossom palette, it's red kind of blends out into more of a pink, but this, this is actually like a true red that you can put in your crease and it will stay red. But the, the quality of the shadows in here is fantastic. Number six is my Zulu palette by Juvia's Place. This was the very first Juvia's Place palette that I ever owned. I can make it look with this palette. I don't find it hard at all. The the, the tones in here are, are pretty similar. I think I did like my very first my very first picture on my Instagram was with the using this palette right here. The shade the, there are no shade names on here unlike everything else. So this turquoise shimmer is gorgeous. It differs from the masquerades turquoise the masquerades turquoise is more blue this is more of a green turquoise this right here this green shade is fantastic I love it it's probably my favorite shade in this palette this again is a turquoise here the purples okay it does stain my eyes so it'll stain it pink um, but it's okay I like the yellow and the orange I just love this palette I I don't really use the brown. There's really no reason for me to use the brown. But the rest of these are fantastic. Number five is the ABH Modern Renaissance palette. I like this for the quality of the shadows. This is just a me palette. This is a Rachel palette. Vermeer is my favorite and most used shade in here. I love Bonfresco. It's a really cool. It's almost like it's almost like Dusty Rose from the Soft Glam palette, but it's not as deep. I will use this when I want a warm tone look. Um, and I use this to work a lot. This is the OG of, like this bumped up I palette quality a hundred fold and everyone stepped up their game after, after this palette came out. Number four is a little dirty so I apologize. The Too Faced Chocolate Gold palette. I bought this palette I saw a recommendation, I can't remember who it was, it was so long ago, I'm sorry. 
and they were notoriously like they didn't like Too Faced and they loved this palette. This is what shimmers are supposed to be like. I'm looking at it so you guys don't see the reflection all that much. This is a palette that I will take with me traveling when I don't want any, no muss, no fuss. So I on, you only have four mattes in here and then you've got a shimmer and that's, that's my look. I don't even use all the mattes. It's like a couple mattes, set the lid, couple mattes, put on a shimmer and boom, I'm done. I'm out the door. It's really fast. And to use classy and sassy right here the most. I like to use famous. I don't really like to use stripping diamonds even though I really like, um, I really like silver. It just kind of comes off a little blue. I'll use old money as well. I don't like new money, this pink one here. It's not that good. And then the darker shades, I, I will do on like the outer V. I don't tend to do a look with those, but this chocolate gold palette is fantastic. I like the quality and it's easy for me to just, easy for me to just choose a look and go. Number three is limited edition, but this is one of my palettes in my collection, so I have to show it. It is the Too Faced Gingerbread Spice Palette. Now, I know at the time of me making this video, Too Faced, because it's July, Too Faced has re-released this palette, which some people were up in arms about. I, I bought it when it was limited edition, and I'm not offended that it's back. I, I think it's great. <laughs> but the packaging got me. Like, well, the packaging and the color story, this whole thing. Just look how cute this is. Normally for your Too Faced holiday releases, we're like, meh. This was, I was, I was... This is what I'm wearing on my ice today. I've got um, Spice's Nicest Orange one in my trans as my transition, and I also kind of deepened it up with, with gingerbread. And then I added Ranger Paws to the outer corner, and I used the Duochrome Hot Toddy on my lids. Oh, and Spiced Eggnog in my inner corner. Now, I'm gonna show you Hot Toddy, because it is a Duochrome, like a, a pinky red gold duochrome shade. Like, oh my gosh. It is so pretty. It's really, really pal like it's I wanna say chunky, but it's kind of chunky. And I'm willing to overlook that just because it looks so gorgeous on the eyeballs. <laughs> I don't care what time of year this is. I will wear this. The only shade that I really don't like is Frostbite Me. It is horrible. Like, it, I don't even bother. It. I don't even, I just don't. I have no other things to say about it. Every other shade in this palette I will use, which is really rare for a palette for me because a lot of palettes I have, I don't utilize everything. But I've used every single shade in this palette, except for that one on a regular basis. Number two, the next two palettes, I ended up getting a gift card for Sephora for a really large chunk of money, and I had my eye on these two palettes, and I bought them, and these surprised me because these are my two top favorite palettes that I have ever owned. Number two is the ABH Sultry palette, and it was limited edition. This is the cool toned palette of my dreams. I had been searching and searching and searching for a matte gray that wasn't going to skip or look horrible and slate is where it's at. Cyborg comes off not, it doesn't pull blue like a lot of silvers, it's like a true silver. I even use this pop of color here too, I, the, like I have a, an Instagram where I used roast quartz and, and bloom to make a pink look. I use pearl quite a bit as well. I will use this um, also for work and parties and things. Like if you want a, a little more smoky um, type of eyeshadow, I will end up using this one. The quality is great. This color story is great. I can go gold, I can go silver, I can go pink in it. Oh, I, I, I haven't gotten, gotten tired of it and it's been seven months that I've had this now. 
sometimes I do get glitter on my hands from this packaging that's gonna come off. We've waited long enough. What is my number one palette of my own collection? Drum roll, please. I don't have any drums. This is the Dominique Cosmetics Latte Palette. This is old news, but I don't care. <laughs> this is the best quality eyeshadow palette that I have. And you can see some of these are coming off because it's very well loved. This is my go-to work palette. This is my go-to um, everyday palette. The shimmers in here are fantastic. The mattes are out of this world. Sometimes I will pair these up with the pop of blue or purple. I I love this palette. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did when I bought it and it is it's not necessarily unique the colors but just the quality and the cohesiveness of this color story I just do I, I reach for this more than I reach for any other palette of mine and that is the truth but that's it that is every palette that I own all 17 of them ranked for you my friends I like going through these kinds of things and, and ranking them like this because that really shows me what I have in my collection, what I don't have in my collection, and how I really feel about what I own. A couple of these I can see parting with. A few of them I need to give another chance to, and some of them I'm probably going to keep for a really long time. If you are new to my channel, you would, you would not know that I am on a makeup no-buy this year for 2019, so I will only buy new makeup if I run out of it for this calendar year. You can tell from what I just showed you, I'm not going to run out of eyeshadow anytime soon. So I have not bought any eyeshadow since Christmas, which is seven whole months, <laughs> which is really good for me. <laughs> so I, have, I apologize if none of these are new to you, um, but I'm not buying eyeshadow, so there's nothing new in here. Well, thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you are having a fantastic summer. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe before you leave, and I will catch you later.